Tax Mageddon encompasses, I don't know how many different taxes, but it adds up to something like $500 billion. And most tax na- analysts suggest it could raise taxes on middle class families anywhere from two to $6,000 a year. This is the expiration of the Bush tax cuts, capital gains taxes, estate taxes, on and on and on. Um, it's interesting you say some in your own party are now working to avoid this. I've heard talk that during the lame duck session, after the presidential election and after the congressional election and, and November 6th, that there could be a deal worked out, something along the lines of the Bull simpson Commission that, as you suggested, might raise some tax revenues in order to reduce spending. Is, so is that what you're talking about? Is that what you hear coming together? Well, what I'm, foc- what I'm talking about here is the, the military half of the sequester. Remember, there's $110 billion of automatic cuts January 3rd of next year because, believe it or not, of the failure of the super committee last fall. And there's many folks in my party who think that we'd be better off actually raising taxes by a little bit instead of cutting defense by $55 billion. Where do you stand on that, Congressman? I, I happen to wholeheartedly disagree with it. I, I, there, in fact, the, the, the House, the Republicans in the House, actually passed a plan to replace that $55 billion of spending cuts in the military with reductions someplace else, but not with raising taxes. In fact, it was the Democrats who offered a plan to get rid of those cuts, replace those cuts by raising taxes. Um, So we've had a plan. We think it's a good plan. Paul Ryan helped us write it to replace those $55 billion in cuts and to say to folks, look, we have to reduce spending. It just is not smart to take one half of these spending cuts off of this one line item of the budget, which is the Defense Department. Um, So we've tried to come up with alternative ideas, but there are now, we hear growing voices within our own party talking about possibly raising taxes by a little bit instead of getting rid of those defense cuts. And I think that's a mistake. So what would you have us do? We're approaching the fiscal cliff. Mick Mulvaney's in charge. He's leading the committee that's going to put together the avoidance of the fiscal cliff bill. What would it look like? Uh, on the sequester half, take what the Republicans have already done. It's a good plan. It's a solid plan. I, you know, it's, I, I fight with my leadership as much as anybody. The plan that we came up with as a Republican Party in the House this summer was a really good plan on how to replace those sequester cuts with other reductions, smart reductions, not across the board cuts, cutting things that need to be cut, not the Defense Department. And again, let me say this as, as somebody who has offered an amendment this year to freeze defense spending. I'm not one of those folks who say that you can't save money in the Defense Department. You can, and we should. Good, but a 10, uh, a 10% across the board cut is not the way to do it. So stick with the Republican plan in the House when it comes to the sequester. And on the tax, on the tax side, just extend them all. And then let's take this opportunity then to look at what you guys were talking about in your earlier segment about simplifying the tax code. Um, a tax increase right now, uh, really what I happen to disagree with the CBO from time to time, but a, a $500 billion tax increase on January 3rd is, now, is a hardwired prescription for recession. Now- 